yes the ground is white and solid i'll come back down to explore the river a bit more it's yeah it's not as clear as i thought well i suppose it is as clear as i thought it would be um i'm not wearing the sunglasses for thermal properties i'm wearing them because i might be able to see any movement in the water if anything follows the lure all i've got is a lure i've no idea how long i steer through there three or four deer way way in the distance there I've already passed some munt jacks and uh, loads of pheasants so one assumes nobody's really been down here for ages can you blame them indeed with the weather being like it is pleasant enough walk down here I'm going to give it an hour, just throwing around. All I've got is a sidewinder lure. Just here, look. Just there trying to a rubber sidewinder because there might be perch and I've got a wire trace on just in case. Who knows, there's a pike. Could be another blank. I don't suppose I'll last much more than an hour. I'm not travelling and exploring like I did last time. I'm only going to fish this um, straight patch along here, dropping into holes and see if anything comes up. I've got two pairs of socks on, thermal long johns. Body's not cold, but yes, my fingers and my feet are. And I've got a croaky bug. I figure it's better to be out in the open in the fresh air than it is sat at home. That's what I find with bugs anyway. Well, I tried the first two swims, starting at the bottom end of the fishery, working my way up in holes. I'm just dropping into holes down there. So the pace is a lot better, and you can see there the weed has dropped, uh, dropped quite a bit from when I was here before. Good clarity, but nothing sort of flashed up at me yet. You never know, and obviously I don't know the fishery at all. Probably in a totally useless spot, and somebody says, oh, don't fish there, there's... Nobody ever catches anything there. You need to go to such and such swim. But of course, you don't know that, do you, when you're fishing? It's all a learning process on a new fishery. I talked to a couple of people, they say it's not great, you know, it's not... It's not the Hampshire Raven or the River Wye but there must surely be some fish left in there somewhere. Or some bushes to get my lures into. That was lucky. Very, very cold winter's day. Quite a lot of, of, of wildlife I've seen around here. It's just nothing of the fish life in the water yet, but you never know. I will persevere for an hour and then when I get too cold, I'm just basically sort of bunny hopping this this lure, just jigging it along almost along the bottom, which I find is better slower. Let's get up there for perch. Who knows if there's perch in here? The thing is, rivers, rivers nowadays in the UK, a lot of them look really good, and they're not, and they're struggling a lot of the uh, rivers. But I'm only looking for one fish at the moment. It's a bit like beach fishing. A bit like I should be beach fishing. I think I've got more chance beach fishing. But I am giving it a go. See, there's lots of little nooks and crannies here that all look very, very fishy. If not, I'm going to go back to my little stream and get some magus and go dace fishing again, because I've quite enjoyed that. A nice bit of dace fishing while, uh, the, you know, the... Oh, did you see that pike? Holy smoly, they are indeed fishing here. I've gone up the tree. Wowie. That was so close. He came right out from there. That is, oh my God. I've, I've, I apologize to this river for thinking there's nothing in here. Maybe I'll be able to slow that up. Don't even think I was looking down there. He was one eat, oops. Now I've gone all to pieces now. Check drag. I'm on a single hook, that's all. Well, it's nice just to see a fish, I've got to be perfectly honest. Guys, just got hit, just got hit. Oh, nice pike. Change your lures, put a spinner bait on. First cast. He might split the hook because I'm only on a single. I've got the camera in my mouth, which is why I'm not talking. It looks like a jumper. Got him. Ugh. I'm not going to say 
I'm surprised, but I am uh, surprised. Well, first fish out of this river. I've seen that other pike, got one here. Way more hopeful now. It's just getting, I feel that clarity in the water. Let's get it back. Well, that was such a result because I've got to tell you, first cast out, I let the spinner blade go pretty low and slow, trying to feel for the vibrations because you can actually feel through the rod top. It thump, 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 thump. It went boom. I thought, oh no, another snag. I really whacked it in a bit of a rage and it went <laughs> Lucky, lucky, lucky. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I've come up three swims. My gut instinct is go back to that swim that I've turned that fish over on the sidewinder lure and just drop this spinner blade down there because it can uh, you know work at low revolutions and sort of I can hang it in the in the current a little bit more. Let's give it a go, because I've only got well look. Sun's going down. 40 minutes before hypothermia sets in. Well, I just got snagged up and pulled this in, but that's interesting because I now know that this swim is worth fishing because this is a load of nylon line. I suppose it could have been washed down in a flood. Let's have a look at it. It tells me what they were after. I don't see any sort of big lead rigs on there. Just, just nylon, no hook sizes being a bit of a giveaway, but it's old uh, twig, so it's been on the bottom a while. So it tells me this might be a swim worth looking at. I'm imagining chub fishing from that tree down the back of that tree. It's all a learning curve, this fishing. Even at my age, still learning, learning, learning. Well guys, I think I'm going to call it, I think I'm actually standing on part of the frozen river. Look down here, you can see where it's been frozen here, then the river's dropped down to there and it's refrozen again. So I don't really need to be walking all that lot, but you can see, this is why I've got cold feet. It's because the edge of the river here is all frozen. It doesn't look dark, but it is. Well, it is because I've got these polarizing glasses on, so I'm going to call it quits. I've come out with a fish. I might walk there and have one cast, um, failing that, I'll see you guys back in the office. Right, I'm back, following afternoon. Squeezing two hours in, the difference being, I've actually got a bit of bait with me this time. I've only got four small fish, that's all I've got. Um, as you can see, the snow, well, it's not snow, it's all the frost, it's still frozen over there. But they've given a break in the weather coming. Thank the Lord for that. We've had like 10 days. I suppose we've had two weeks of it now. I'm sick of it. Frozen, frozen, minus five, minus five, minus five. Worse in Scotland, minus 10 pluses. So everywhere's frozen, but that stops the water draining out the land going into the river. So they've given a load of rain coming. So I'm figuring if I don't come now, the rain will come. It puts cold water into the river, kills the fish in. Also colours it, kills the fish in. So I've come back. But what I'm going to do... I've come straight back to that place where I turned that pike over. When I brought the lure up and he boiled on the lure and I, either I missed it or he missed the lure. Um, I'm going to put a dead bait down there. It's just a hunch. I know the fish could be anywhere in the river. I'm a great believer they go back to the same spot. That's where they like laying. I'd be real surprised if I don't get a pick up there, first or second twitch through. But I don't know how many shots I'm going to need to get down in the current. Just got one... Uh... One swan shot, an SXG on there, and the little rubber band over the nose of the barbless hook to uh, a single barbless, just to um, hold it. I've got a snake down there, I've got to watch. So, I don't want to go in, but he, he came up down there, so I'm going over there. I don't want it going down, twitching just like this, just bumping it, twitching it, flashing it. It might, might be a little bit too fast. The current, I might need two swan shot. I'm in the zone now. About there. You see the difference? I couldn't do this with a lure, but with a bait, I could just leave it twitching. Almost up and down in one spot. Twitch it right up to the surface, look. Got a little bit of weed on it. It's off. Next, I'm going to try it just out there. 
because there could be a pike laying it up underneath this. So when you're doing twitch dead baits like this, obviously you do it much, much slower. Let it rise, let it sink, let it rise. It's much better. It's not a sort of searching technique. You almost have to go to where you think the pike might be holding up or the bait fish. Now, they could be up under, right under the side there. Let's go right on the inside. I'm just going to fan cast, work this area out there. That's about where he swelled up last time. Okay, maybe he's not at home. Down there. I hooked up here a snag a branch and I've pulled it into the swim unfortunately. I've only got four baits so when they come off I'll have to go on to lures. I feel like I'm not getting down deep enough out in that main current which is most of the currents over that side. Of course, they could be lying anywhere. Right, I'm gonna. Can't stop twitching it now. I'm gonna flick the camera off and get back to you when I've gone through here and got a few more swims under my belt. If I get a take, I'll come back on. Guys, just had a pick up. My problem being, if I get round here without putting any extra pressure on the fish she might spit it out right I've got the nets here not to say I'm gonna hook it up yet but it was definitely a take 90% sure that was a that was a take guys I just just tighten up oh he might have dropped it let's watch the rod top No, he's on. He is on. Wow, that was at the back of that bush. I'm going to keep it down down low because I, I don't want him going under the bush and getting snagged up. This feels good fish. It does feel a nice fish. Holy schmoly! Holy schmoly! The size of this kitty. Oh my god. I mean, the net's big enough. No idea. Oh, look at this. That is a, that is a lunk and a half. Oh my God. I've got to play him steady. Got one single hook. Oh, he's just in the scissors. That's a jumper. Well, let me get it out of the system a little bit. Every chance of losing this, I've got one single hook in the scissors. Hoping you're gonna see this. Okay, I think he's quiet enough for net time. What do you think? That's a nice fish, that's double figures. Good lord, and I he ain't going in this net, people. I've only got my little perch and jack net with me. Well. Bigger net, I've got it anyway, but let's see what we can do without oh, falling in the water. He's being, oh look, he's being very receptive at the moment. I feel in a minute he's going to wake up. Yeah, it's not going to end well. No, it's not going to end well. Got him. Let's give him, get him up. Oh, Jesus. Holy crap, that's a. I'm telling you, people, that's a 20 pounder. Look at that. Look at the size of it. Oh my God. Well, I've caught him before, and I'm telling you, that's a 20 pound fish. I've got a wide angle camera lens on, so. Oh, we've got to come with a bigger net. 
Now, there's the hook. He is being so docile, it's unbelievable. Hook's out. God, I'm shaking. That is a chunk and a half. OMG. People, all the quiver, the camera's shaking. There's a reason for it. That's the reason. That is a big pike. Who would have thought it in this small river? Look, I can't even get them all out. I'm going to call him 18 to 22. What? I mean, that's stupid, isn't it? Tiny four inch roach. Spanking condition. He's not one of those that's been bashed and manked and stamped around on. That is an absolute crackerjack fish. I can't believe it. He's somewhere between 19, 19 and 21, I'd put him. That's a big fish. What a super fish. Got him all the way up and straight down the cake hole. Gotta love it, guys. Beautiful. Let's get it back in the net. I cannot believe it. <laughs> That's just, I'm not gonna say I deserve it. The old twitch baits. Wow. Got to text Mike. If I've got a signal, I've got to text Mike. Whack a do. I hope the pictures come out, people. Hands are cold, feet are cold. Who cares? My goodness me. What else is in this river? <sighs> Hands has now finally stopped shaking. These glasses are really, really dark, so I imagine they'd be good in the sun uh, when it's bright in the summer. Uh, but I didn't see that fish, it just bang, it just hit me. Twitching it around the edge on this, what they call downward swing, a bit like salmon fishing, let it go down and round. Wow, well, I'm, I'm almost shell-shocked, to be honest. I've caught big pike before, but that's a little river like this. My goodness me, I thought it would finish. But what it does tell me, for a fish to get that big, there must be other fish in here. Chub, roach, dace, there must be other stuff in here. So I'm going to come back when the weather finally breaks and have a go with the, uh, with the baits and see what we can do. Find you. To pretty well two two pike sessions one afternoon and a, another afternoon and a fish in each and i ain't done yet but you can see with the uh, twitch dead baits i can hold it in one place for some time you know so if there's a a holding area which i think is a, a good slack for a pike then i can keep that bait there while i still twitch it and work it in that area with the lure if you stop the lure stops and they turn away so obviously twitch dead baits where i sort of specialize in really if I run out of these, I've got three, that's all I've got left. Be nice to think we'll get a fish on each, but I doubt I will. Probably get a branch on each now. I had to come, I had to come, because it's got that sort of greeny tinge. When I first looked at this river, it was like brown, and I said to you, you guys probably won't see it, but it's got what I call the River Thames sort of clear stroke. It's not going to chalk stream, of course it's not. Spate River, but it's got that tinge in it, um, and that's fallen out a little bit, so that gives me the clarity, and I know the pike can see it. Happy days. I've always done pretty good under these chestnut trees, I have to say. But there's a nice slack over here. I didn't get anything on, on the lure. Or was it here I caught one on the lure? I can't remember now. It's just so... Really, really looks good for pike and or perch. Just over the back of that slack, just about there. Currents on the inside here, but it's slack over the far side behind this sort of bit of tree or branch there. Now you're not going to cover the same ground with the dead bait um, a different swims it's not because you're not fishing it as fast but what you are doing is going through that particular area much more I feel successfully fast water's on the inside so I can't really make the bait hold in one position long it comes up whereas over there behind the back of that rubbish is slacker I can keep that bait in there a little bit longer That'd be the swim to fish from the other bank. <clears throat> you can't, it's just a one bank only fishery, this one, as I understand it. What do I know? I've only just got the uh, ticket for here. 20 pound pike, second, third fish you drip out, just half days, two hours. 
So I just keep literally bumping it. You don't want to fish these fast. You want it to sink. And generally as you tweak it, that's when they grab it. Sometimes they take it on the drop. And around tree roots there, I always let it sort of just dangle there a little bit longer. It's quite uh, spooky when you get a big fish come up and eight, nine, ten pounds I consider a nice pike. And they and they come out and grab it close range. Oh, wakes you up, I can tell you. I still think one would be under that tree, but I don't want to cast too close to it because I've only got a couple of rigs with me and three dead baits. <clears throat> Loads of pheasants this morning. See, these are all the, what I call the old conquer trees by the look of it. And I've always done quite good pike fishing under them on other fisheries, day ticket ones, you know. It's just getting whisked away there. A little bit too fast. Temptation is always to go deeper and deeper all the time and eventually you're gonna get snagged on trees because it appears a lot of as, as stuff and rubbish has gone in the water, which is always Sort of good for fish. Was that a snag or was that a fish? What I do is just open the bait arm like this, hold the tension on the line and just wait to see if you see any taps. I was just about to say I'm about to uh, lose this rig in a branch by going deeper and deeper. And I... Yeah, I have. That's a shame. Oh no, it's moving. Not fish moving, just a snag moving. I'll settle for getting my rig back and the bait. Here he comes. Wow. Let's see if I can get him up here. This is what I mean about going deeper and deeper, look. Eventually you pay the price. I got it off. Now I've also got to remember, I've towed that in there. So when that settles, there's going to be a potential snag there. I'll have one more cast over that way. Assuming that snag's now cleared. That's why I'm using 50 pound braid. So if I do get snagged, I can move stuff. And if I'm on a lure, I can get the lure back. No, Graham. It's another one. Really branching out now, boys. <laughs> oh, I've lost the bait. Hang on a second. It's the baits I need. I think I've lost the bait. Is it a floater? No, it's gone sunk. That's a shame. I'll have to settle for the rig, which I've got back. So I've lost the bait. You can see it's a risk. A risk game twitching baits. Morning again, guys. I'm out of baits. So I got on the uh, spinner bait, and I've got one hooked up. I've got the camera in the mouth. He might come off. He might come off, but he does, he does. Single hook. Right, let's get the net. up behind the spinnerbait I missed him I never thought he'd take it look at the leeches on him there you see the leech there normally sign they're laying on the bottom in the winter just a winter thing but a nice pike obviously not in the bracket that other one good fish noisy uh, pike spotting plane up there great fish there we go Lovely and quiet. Go on, go. I hope you don't run out of fuel over the top of me. Let's get it back. 
well, I've got faith in the lure now. It was a bit of a funny old take because it's quite slack down there. And he's just on the inside of that, so I call it spear blade. I don't know what the proper name of it is, that weed there. He was just on the inside of that. <laughs> Missed it. I thought, ah. Oh. I dropped it out again because I knew roughly where he was. I just sort of fluttered it, which is not normally how you fish it, but he nailed it. And that's all that matters. A few more casts here and I'm going to move on. I want to get in the margins, people. And about three goes at it, amazingly. All right, net time. Wowee, what an afternoon session, eh? He's gonna jump. He's gonna look like he's a jumper. A little bit cold for him jumping, but. All right. Got him. And that was on that drop back. So there. Oh, huge fish. Absolutely acceptable and freezing cold. What a trip. And what a lure. And what a mess, really. But... There he goes. I wonder if anybody ever pike fished you there, let's be honest. Hands are getting very, very cold now. The sun's, well, the sun never came out anyway. Check this light out, people. The ice there, all the way through here. This is frost, not snow, that's how cold it is. Ah, oh, they're hurting now. Get about three goes under that piece of overhang there. I feel I've still got a few more cast in me. It's amazing how fish can actually make your fingers warm up. Well, people, I'm packing up now. The old lure's still gone through a few snags. I've got it back anyway. So, um, sun's gone down. Time to get off the water. It's going to get really cold again tonight. And I'm in big trouble. I'm supposed to be at granddaughter's uh, third birthday party at 3.30. It's quarter to four and I'm 15 minutes from the car, 15 minutes from home. Am I, am I what they call a bad grandpa or is that the way it is? Guys, we'll see you in the next one. Well pleased with that. Absolutely, that lunker has made my day, afternoon, and yeah, I will be back. As if I can find my way out. Well, luckily, with night navigation, a compass and a decent pair of shoes, I did in fact find my way home. And now, over we go to, yes, the much awaited for random section. And of course, there is something very, very different on this one. Not fishing, I might get out this evening, have a go for a barbel, chub, whatever. Blank, blank, that equals blank. But blazing hot day. So I'm gonna see um, what's about here, because I know some of you guys like looking at the old stuff, let's go and see what we can find. Well, I say you like looking at the old stuff, you've got to put up with me anyway, haven't you? Over here's another small miniaturized steam engine, traction engine, I'm on, or a full steam engine or traction engines. We'll have a look at this one, it's just stood there running. Miniaturized a beautiful piece of engineering. Again, running on like coal there. Get little rides on it. Rubber wheels, solid rubbers, I guess. They've got these little miniature like brakes they've got there. How delicate are they made with engineering? And this is so smooth, you can't hear any noise or squeaking or anything.
guessing they used to run things maybe off this flywheel pulley system if they run stuff off that as well I don't know doing some job <laughs> he's on the shovel look he's on the shovel somebody has to be there Does that run on petrol? Because I see a spark plug in there. Yeah, it's petrol. Um, yeah. Well, it's 16 parts petrol, one part something else. Oil, I think. Yeah. Or two strokes. Yeah. But I mean, that's unbelievably heavy on its own, isn't it? It's ridiculous weight to it. Oh, yeah. Even just like holding it yeah, still up. Yeah, still. It's like a motorbike when it falls over, you know, you can't hold oh, it. Oh, yeah. Jesus. You can't imagine a man using that all day, can you? you know? Nowadays, when you think of the machine you've got. They must have rotated, mustn't they, men? They must have rotated. I don't think rotation is well, going to happen. Today. Rotation's not happening, are they? Don't. If you want to, I can get my boots and do it. No, no, no. I've, I'm here now, George. You know, I'm getting the rhythm. This is the machine that they invented the toe cap boots with. Is this one a goer, guys? Sorry? Is this Hopefully. one a goer? Hopefully. Yeah, we'll be in a minute. What do they use this for? It's a rock crusher. A rock crusher? Yeah. You get politicians in there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that'd be nice. Don't need yours like more than enough for that. They're too fat. So they use that for making what? Uh, uh, hardcore for the basic yeah. foundations and stuff, road, yeah? Road repairs, that's what Road repairs. How old would this one be? Early 40s, I'd imagine. Yeah. You don't know it. Yeah. Sometime in the 40s. There you go, guys. All the bricks to break up. Hopefully, it makes life easier. And a good old school dumper truck. What does it run on, like diesel or petrol? Petrol, petrol one. Uh, well, I'm, I'm torn between the steam engine leaving and the guys getting the rock crushing machine. They got the belt going. I think they put it on the other side the pulleys and they're going to put these bricks in I want to see what happens and the steam engines go look at this thing I'm running over and I get caught underneath it there he goes see the mark he's making in the dirt you can take some houses down. Let's get over quick, see what these guys are doing with this rubble machine. I've got it going well now. Yeah. <laughs> 
He's got the easy job. <laughs> the flat tire as well. I've got one of those wheelbarrows. They must have some sort of hammer effect in the middle. He's going to get the roller to go over that, I imagine, is he? Yeah. It's a steam roller. <laughs> We've got a jumpy jack over there. Right, that's it, man. Put a whole coat, turn the engine This is a machine and a half. I can remember these as a kid, not that I used them. This is what they hammer the rubble down to smooth it up. If he can get him going. It's only 30 degrees, isn't it? <laughs> what a job! Of course it's all shady around me as yeah. well. George, how's your engine parked in the shade? Oh, it's lovely. So does that light charge itself up and you pull the trigger? Is that how it works? I'm pretty sure when you push it down, it puts the uh, fuel mix in. Yes. And when you pull that in, it no, explodes it and jumps it up. That is some job doing that guys, that is tough, that is a tough job. Looks like they've got a brick stuck somewhere. It's a bit sketchy on the edge there. A cat! A cat! On your shoulder, on top of your head!
Oh, well, listen, I've heard of a parrot on your shoulder, but I've never heard of a cat on your head. Hmm. Still, I suppose in the cold winter you might need that. It's actually uh, per perfect. Perfect. Anyway, if you're feeling a bit hungry now, just hang on, because there's something foody coming along in the next section. Random food, really. So, here we go. This is one of several damson trees that I had um, in my garden. A couple of them died, and this year we've had a load of damson plums come up. Now, they're said to have been brought into this country by the Romans, so they're really, really an old pattern model species, call them what you want. But I have plenty of them, and I just noticed that they were just getting ripe, squishy, and when they've fallen on the floor, they've obviously ripened. And you can see quite a few of those. If I leave them too long, the slugs and the creatures will have them. So it was a collecting of the dams and plums time. It was that time of year. No question, the higher up you go up the tree, unfortunately, the riper they get. So I could only pick them as far as I could stand. Um, and you can see, nice big ones on the south. That's a bit sketchy, that one, Graham. Gone. So, you know, they're, they're quite sharp if you have them on their own. I was actually discovering them when we were having extensions. One of the builders said, oh, my God, look at all these plums there, and started eating them raw. So now, I sort of draw the line on eating them raw, but you can eat them raw. They've got a stone in them, so beware. And the higher up you go, you look at the load on there. This year, I think, is probably more than I've ever known before. Um, and this is only what I call one of the secondary trees there. The main ones, for some reason, both died off way down the other end of the garden. Who knows why so many trees die? But of course, watch this. How stupid is this? Look what he's leaning the ladder on, folks. A twig. He's leaning it on a twig to climb up just to get the fattest, juiciest fruit at the top of the tree. Now, is that not... I mean, I could be a chimpanzee. Let's face it. I would imagine they do the same thing, but without the ladder. Um, you can't help it, can you? you just got to get the best you can. And there, I've got a load of damson plums. All right, they're all different sizes, different shapes, but it doesn't really matter. So next thing I need to do, having procured what I consider a, a sufficient amount to do what I want to do, I'm going to wash them off outside in the garden, in case there's any bugs, earwigs, creepy crawlies, ants, spiders, hornets. Oh, oh my God, hornets. Don't need to think about hornets. Give them a good rinse off. You can, some people say you can rinse them in salt water. That kills any bugs, but I'm going to be boiling them anyway. Now, this is the laborious part. This is taking the stones out of them. They, they, they have quite a big stone for the size of the fruit that's there. So you want to take all these out, otherwise somebody's going to have a nice crumble with custard and crunch on something and bust a filling. So you've got to go through. It's a mushy, messy job. No question about it. But listen, loads of people do that, down not they, years ago? Now, I haven't put a dress on and some rings and stuff. That's the wife's hands there. So you measure out what you want. I think this is about 800 grams or something like that of de-stoned, there we go, I know it's 800 because it's just in the picture. In they go, into the saucepan. We're going to make apple and damson crumble with wild damson. In goes a chunk of butter. I don't know how much, but she decides to put another piece of butter in as well. Into mixed mixing dish goes a load of brown sugar. That is a lot of sugar. That is a lot of sugar. No wonder people like eating our crumbles. Sprinkles it on the top just to mix it all in. Now that will be it boiled down and, and will actually uh, go into a sort of, I suppose you call it like a, a juicy slop really. But it's all good stuff. On goes the gas. On goes the pot. Just stir it around gently. You don't want to smash them all up. Otherwise you've just got basically liquid soup or a sweet version of whatever. Then we get the apples. Now, we're just not using cookers, we're using eating apples here. You can use a potato peeler like Wifey is doing here. Peel all the apples first. Now, you can also get those coring machines, which are quite handy, which take the core out the centre, or you can just do them like this. You just quarter them, nip the ends off, take the core out with a, with a knife, shorter knife she's using there, 
and then you can dice those down. You don't want, again, you don't want them too small because they're just going to boil down to mush, aren't they? And in fact, you're heating them, you're baking them, you're not boiling them as such. This is why we've used cookers, uh, eaters and not cookers. Cookers we have had to pre-cook, but these are just eating apples. So the mix is now reduced, I think is a polite word. They say it's reduced down. Uh, in goes the apples. Just want to mix it in gently so all the small segments of apple go in there on top. And I say this is a mix we make with our own crumble. In goes some flour. I don't know what I don't know what she puts in. I really don't. I just eat it, eat it and film it. And you can make you can get you can actually buy uh, different mixes of crumble. I think you can just buy a proper crumble mix. Bit of flour, bit more more more, more sugar, more and more more sugar. My goodness, that family should be like the size of barrels or something. Oh, yes, let's get some more. Let's, well, let's weigh this. Two pounds, three pounds, it's a lot of butter. Put it in the little whiskey machine. Whiz it all up there. I think she put some crumble mixture in as well. A little bit of salt. In goes the salt, all in, mix it all up. Blitz it, I think is the word. Sprinkle your mixture over the top. Like this, you can put, yes, even more sugar on the top. That's allegedly to make it sort of brown a little bit in the oven. And you've got to heat it all up, cook it right through. I'm going to call it half an hour, I don't know. It's what every, everybody's oven's different. Those fan ovens are different as well. A lot hotter. We've got a fan oven, so it's shorter and hotter. And there you go, served up. Wild damson from my own garden and apples from the supermarket. Covered with custard. Oh yes, you, you've got to have custard with it. So there you go. You think, oh, that's quite interesting what Graham's done. But of course, that is what I've done with my uh, damson plums before. In fact, look at this. Graham's actually written articles in magazines about this. The Plums of Damascus, actually published in magazines. I've done a lot of writing, 34 different magazines over God knows how many years. And uh, this was one I did when I was making jam. I just thought it was interesting to show you some pictures out of it. That's what the flowers are like in the springtime before they turn to plums. This is a jam, very similar to, to reducing it all down. And as you can see there, yes, indeed, we made our own wild damson jam. Mmm, with custard, listen, anything tastes good. Wild brambles, berries, everything, just whoosh, custard on the lot. It's good stuff. Hope you enjoyed that one and listen, probably a lot of you didn't realise Uncle Graham did that much writing and wrote for gardening magazines and photojournalists as well. Yes, it's true, several times. I was very diverse in the writing and photographic area as well. We'll see you in the next one and don't forget, I hope to take on some random stuff there as well. See you guys, hit that subscribe button, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, you people know the score. Me? I think I'd have some more of that custard.